I'm Dick Meehan, a civil engineer with many years of dam safety consulting experience in Asia, U.S., and South America, specializing in earthquake problems. In this short video, I'm going to go to Sumatra, Indonesia. This is a small village in Indonesia today. It's located in the Diary Regency of Sumatra, near the town of Parangil, in the Sopokamil Valley. Next, we see that same area a few years from now. The Diary Prima Mineral Company, DPM, plans to build a tailings waste disposal project near and above that village. The company is trying to get government approval to do this right now. In this short video, I'm going to look at the safety of this proposed tailings dam. Now just to show you what can happen when a tailings dam fails, I want to show you this video of a failure that occurred last year in January 2019 in Brazil. It killed about 270 people in that community below the dam. The dam had been okay for a few years with dry weather, but when they had a rainy year in 2018, the tailing mud got soft and weak and unstable. You can see in these three pictures I'm showing you what happened. One day about lunchtime the dam suddenly failed. The dam failed spontaneously without any earthquake. So wet weather is the enemy of tailings dam safety. In Sumatra it rains much more and you don't have dry summers there like they do in Brazil. So in Sumatra the tailings will never dry and will be less stable. But I'm not going to go into detail on that subject of the danger of rains and floods here because that has already been analyzed by another expert, Dr. Emmerman, in his report, which concludes that the estimates of flooding that were done by the DPM company to design this dam are not correct and do not meet international standards. And I agree with that report. My interest is in earthquake safety, and I'm showing you here a map of Sumatra with its many earthquakes, and the location of the DPM project is at the black spot. Now, there are a lot of ways that an earthquake can make a tailings dam fail, but the biggest and most dangerous is the one I'm showing here, where the shaking causes the wall of the dam to collapse and the failure causes a mud wave to flow down like at Brazil. The mud wave could go in a couple of different directions, including north toward Parangil or to Sopokamil village, either as it is now or in future years from now, when there might be a lot more people and even schools and churches in that same area. Now, complete failure of the dam doesn't always occur, but other bad things can happen with an earthquake, including the rupture of a thin plastic lining of the type that they want to put down to prevent the toxic water in the tailings from seeping down into the ground and poisoning the water downstream from the project. Now these are things that can happen even if the dam wall is well built and the foundation for the dam is stable because the earthquakes that will occur in the future here in Sumatra can be very powerful. Here is another weak wet dam that failed in my home state of California a few years ago in Los Angeles. If this dam had failed a hundred percent it would have drowned thousands of people because the city below grew up after the dam was built. Even with the dry weather in Los Angeles, the dam did not get any safer over the years. It was just waiting for the first big earthquake to come along. All of these examples are for dams that had stable foundations. But suppose the foundation is not stable, as at Sopokamil. Well, we know the foundation is not stable at Sopokamil because the environmental impact report prepared by DPM, although it keeps most of the information about the foundation conditions secret, admits that the foundation is a soft volcanic ash. The yellow color on this map shows that area of volcanic ash. 
DPM doesn't even know how deep it is, and you can see that the dam will be built on top of it. So even if the dam itself is well built, the foundation is not good. You can get a failure like this one that occurred at the Mount Pauly Dam in Canada just a couple of years back. This occurred even without an earthquake. But a tailings dam built in earthquake areas needs a good foundation, a bedrock foundation. But the site that DPM proposes has no bedrock foundation. Here's another example of what can happen in an earthquake when the foundation is unstable. This is in Japan. These buildings didn't break up, they just fell over and sank into the unstable ground during the earthquake. So something very similar can happen with the tailings dam if the foundation is unstable. The dam will simply collapse in the tailings. The wet mud will rapidly flow out. The people of Indonesia know how deadly this can be. Here's a hillside in Pariaman that failed because of a weak foundation in 2009. About 400 people were killed in this accident. This was just a natural hillside with the same kind of soil as at Sopokamil, but they had rain and an earthquake at the same time. You can imagine how much worse this would be if there had been a large tailing disposal area built on top of this unstable ground. DPM says that it hired foreign experts to help them find a safe site for their tailings dam. But that was many years ago, and the very small amount of information that they have shown about those expert investigations does not show any stable ground at the site. International standards require that the owner of hazardous waste disposal facilities must have expert engineers who review their plans and assure that they will be safe. DPM has not done this in their environmental impact report, and in fact they are holding back information, keeping it secret. Their proposed tailing dam would remain for years and decades and even centuries. Its safety would not get better. Powerful earthquakes are sure to continue in this part of Sumatra. I believe that this is not a safe project, and if built, will have a serious failure sometime in the future.